Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. How good is that? Will Anderson, I'm welcome to the show. I'm here. Uh, he's in. He's on and he is in. Are you uh, here in body and spirit? Or? Body and spirit, both here. Well, you don't have much on, mate. You're not doing much. <laughs> no, nah, it's fine, mate. I've always got time for you. When we said, I mean, Tommy said, will you come on the show? And yeah. you said, mate, pick a time. I said, mate, I'm already outside. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'm here all the time. 16th <laughs> season of Gruen. 16th. That's like, a, you, this, you t- you, that's an AFL champion. You, like, that's how many pre-seasons mm. that they do and then they, that's enough. They've had enough, Will. Yeah, right. Are you saying so, to wrap it up? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a bit rich coming on this show and being told to wrap it up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that discussion's never happened around here, mate. No, no. That's no, no, fine. Let's just cling on to this as long as we can. What are you talking about? It doesn't matter. Replace members. It's okay. One of the travelling Wilburys is still alive. We'll keep going. Well, when it becomes when it becomes the Brecky Bunch, that's when I'll be nervous. <laughs> Whippers Brecky Bunch. Oh, you know how this goes, mate. <laughs> yeah, it just depends. Oh. Where in the photo they make you stand, right? <laughs> Am I in the middle or can you photoshop me out easily? <laughs> well, you had some bad radio experiences, have you, Will? <laughs> I mean, there's been a few where I'm like, oh, you know, yeah, funny thing actually, you know, so I did this show Taskmaster on Channel yeah. 10 and they, they. Great show. Yeah, it's so much fun, had a great time, but their promo photo <laughs> is the most obviously photoshopped, like, oh, promo yeah. photo of all time where they did singles of us all. Even though we all, they did a photo of us all, like, you know, the, together. essentially together. Yeah. Obviously, that was no good because the <laughs> promo photo is made up of like five singles that I saw. Like, I reckon eight different drafts yeah. that they just sent through the same... Fo- so one time you're looking off and pointing in one direction, and then yeah. suddenly, oh, no, now I'm pointing at Tom Gleeson. Oh, oh no, now I'm right up the back, huh? and so I seem to be smaller than the other what? contestants. Have you seen that ad for you? It's like a Google Pixel, I think, the phone. Uh-huh. And it says, like, if you take a series yeah. of photos, I take ten photos, it then decides which is the best photo of yeah. you. What the and phone does? Puts, yeah. yeah. So And then it puts the best photo of your head, this is what it looks like in the ad, on your body. Yeah, that's great. But, yeah, great idea, but what if mm. that's not the look you're going for? Mate, what if it's no, not no, a no. funeral no, no, and the last one just... is you smiling? Mate, the, the, the sooner we can all stop thinking for ourselves <laughs> and let the computers take over. Clearly this is, did you see that the head of Bumble was like, oh, you know, in the future, dating will just be, you know, your AI will talk to somebody else's AI and they'll no find way. out, you know, who's the most... <laughs> no. I'm like, yeah, well, that's, that seems to keep all the fun bits in it. Oh, so when I <laughs> <laughs> when I turn up on the date, who, do, who talks for me? I don't think you turn up oh, anymore. <laughs> what part do I play? Because I'm trying to get one away. I know. Oh. Yeah, even intimacy will become right. There'll be just two robots rocking yeah. up, and then they'll give you a bit of a rundown of, yeah, how, the of night how it went. went. That's right. You get a report. You get a printout set to your phone of how it was. My like, Gruen would have ticked off a bit of AI. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's one of the great topics, but at the same time, I know there's a big push for AI to be watermarked Mm -hmm. because you need to be able to say, because it's so realistic and what Mm. they have there and what you can create, you need to point out whether something is real or not because nobody knows what's real anymore. Oh, yeah, I know. But if they start pointing out what's real in advertising or not, that's a (laughs) a slippery slope that the advertisers don't want to go down, I would have thought. (laughs) We have to actually start proving that the burgers are better at Hungry Jack's. Then what? Eating a rat off the street? Like, I mean, like... <laughs> There's a fine line, isn't there? You're suggesting it was happening before AI arrived. Can I just say this, too? Mm. I was at the Melbourne airport the other day. I love when a brand... By the way, I don't I don't mind the old Hungry Jacks because as a vegetarian, they quite, do quite a good vegetarian burger. Okay. And uh, so I always quite like it. Don't Like the chips pop in. Yeah. At yeah. the Melbourne airport, they've done a rebrand. I don't know if this is across the country. I just saw it at the Melbourne. But they're now... They're not Hungry Jacks at the airport anymore. They've got one of those, like, they've classied it up a little I've bit. I've seen that. And they've got the little classy sign out the front, and they're now called HJs. Oh, so you can just get a quick little HJ before you get on the plane if you're just feeling like it. I guess Very it's lucky, it's lucky they're not Burger Jacks, I suppose. <laughs> this is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. Let's talk about why maybe some men are single here, and that's because they can't manage to find 
the right woman here in Sydney. Now, this man has come out to say I'm a very well-travelled man and there are three main reasons why Sydney women are hard to get to know. Have a listen to this. According to locals I've met, there are three reasons for this. One, Sydney siders are unwelcoming of new friends. Unless you're from Sydney, it's almost impossible to break into established social groups and build connections with the women within them. Two, Sydney women are very clicky. Women from the northern beaches only want to date men from the northern beaches. Same goes for the inner west, hills district, eastern suburbs, etc. And three, it takes too much effort to get with Sydney women because as opposed to women from other parts of the world, they're far less promiscuous. When we played this audio, Ollie, who's on the phones, you might have spoken to if you've called the show, Ollie, you were nodding heavily at people not wanting to date outside of their area. You're yeah. a single man. Have you found this? Well, I just find I don't want to leave the northern beaches in general. So why would I want to date someone who lives, you know, like three hours away? Yeah. You want to keep it into your local area. But so what it makes about sense. 40 minutes away, if going over the bridge, you still wouldn't do that? Yeah, Is it just too like, easy? It depends on the person, I guess. But you, you, I do get what he's saying where you are, you're fussy because you want to sort of live and date where you live and you like living. So you, know, you wouldn't, you would never consider somebody that say lived in the east if they were in Randwick or something. Or, <laughs> or. Um, no, I just, I, w- I wouldn't go out of my way to go look in other areas. But would you go you, out? But if like, I found someone that was living in an area that isn't too far away, then yeah. But like I'm not going to go. Hills, I'm not going to go for a night out in Penrith looking because that's a bit far away. And then you to try and find yeah, yeah go see that girl you just, again. You don't, you don't end up spending as, as much time because you're on the the M1 half the time where you're on Cremorne. You know. Didn't you say yeah, to us though it, off air it. that um, the singles pool for you is very slim over in the Northern Beaches because you've been with most of the girls <laughs> over there? <laughs> no, way. no. That's not defamation, don't. defamation. No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ollie, would Ollie's, you say? Oh, I think Ollie's a lovely cat. She's a very fine young man. Ollie, would he you? Go and I sound a hundred when I say that. <laughs> would you go to a pub in Double Bay hoping to meet somebody? Yeah, if it was the chief. You're dropping the chief. Even though you live on the north side. Well, I've got, I've got friends, because I went to, like, depends, I suppose, where you grew up as well. I've got friends that are in that area. But I, I I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't go out of my way to an area I haven't been to. Okay, what what about the other two things? Sorry, Mm. Fitzy, there were other things on the list. Okay, people don't date outside of their area. Um, Sydney, um, Women might be clicky. less... Um, are they, oh, they're more clicky and less promiscuous. What mm. have you got to say about either of those? Um, it depends, I guess, on the the group of the girls, I guess. I, I don't know. I think girls who sort of are in big groups of girlfriends might be like that. But I suppose it depends where and who you hang out with, I guess, because there's some girls that hang out with groups with guys in them and there's some girls that will only go out with their girlfriends on a night out. So yeah. it depends. It's all very subjective. You're very good at this, all. And for all the ladies out there, Ollie is looking for someone no. to dance with as well. Ollie's a good-looking rooster too, ladies. Yeah, but that what about all... dancing with me? Oh, yeah. Oops. Non-stop. We've been called to lighting up now. Ollie and Georgie are making that. Oh, <laughs> this is good news. Better. Michael so, Usher's ringing back <laughs> <laughs> says his girlfriend. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. It is jarring when you hear a scream come from the house from one of your children. You're like, what have they found? What is going on yeah, here? Are they what okay? Is, is there somebody in the house? You're freaking out. So this is Huey. Got home from school, yeah. walked up the stairs, and he's like screamed. And I, I haven't heard that scream from him for a while. So I've. You, you've just you go into sprint mode, and I don't know if you know, guys know, but I hold a couple of Australian records, so quite quick off the mark. Oh, you did the long jump, did you? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, a high jump <laughs> over the stairs. Oh, wow! And I've got up to him, and I said, and he's gets up there, he goes, "Dad, there's poo everywhere." Oh, so I've then <laughs> I've then gone up the stairs. I'm going, what is going on? A bird's got into the house. Oh my God. BJ's left one of the... She's left one of the doors open upstairs and a bird has walked in and the cat... We've got the new cat, Looney. Oh, of course. ...is trying to catch the bird. The bird doesn't know how to get back out through that little strip in the door that it got in through and it's just banging into the wall and it oh. is freaking out. And I have gone... As I've gone up the stairs, Kate... Yeah. ...and I've hit up the top, there is... Poo everywhere. <laughs> now, I've got, then gone into our main bedroom. There's poo all over our oh, bed. No. Oh, no. Then Huey's let out another scream. I've gone into his bedroom. <laughs> There's poo all over his bed. <laughs> oh, no. From this the bird. One bird. The bird's travel. What sort of bird is it? It was, a little, it was only a tiny little swallow as really? well. Really? Um, and I'm... Oh, 
God, the damage that it's done. There's <laughs> no more worms left in that bird's tummy. It took me a, it took me about an hour and a half just to, with baby wipes to go around and just oh my God. clean up all this poo all over the house. Oh, you're what a good a, man. What animal got into your house 13, 20, 10? <laughs> when you get home and you're freaking out because you can hear noises, that's the other mm. thing as well. To herd this bird out as well, like it's... It's I've a big done, that plenty, done that plenty of times over the years, but when it's an actual flying bird, <laughs> it's call, hard what's to... What's harder? Uh, what, you I couldn't mean, call this one an Uber, mate. <laughs> Cade's given us a call. What animal did you have in your house, Cade? Well, I had a, a, cat, a little kitten in my uh, uh, property when I was building it. So I was in the construction phase, and uh, I had the framework up, and then they were about to come and sheet my walls. So I had to get this cat out, and I had just noticed it in the morning of the day of the sheeting. So yeah. I had to go and chase the cat around, make sure it got out, but it went into a, a, a section where I couldn't get into it, and it delayed the whole process. Oh, so, oh so, of course. You couldn't yeah. build the kitten into the house, well, could no, you? Everyone was telling me, just don't worry, it'll come out, just sheet over it. I'm like, mate, oh. I want to have a dead cat in my walls. Yeah, yeah no, I a dead cat in the wall. <laughs> Andrew, what was on your pillow, Andrew? Mate, I had a snake on my pillow when I was younger. No, you didn't. No. Where were I you? Did. Country Victoria. It was summertime. Again, I was young, about maybe six or five. I just mm. remember I opened up my pillow before bed, and I'm like, what is that? Yeah. And there was a snake curled up there. Because we used to have one of those window grills that you just, like, flip open yeah. um, throughout the day. And, yeah. yeah, I'm assuming it crawled through there, and that freaked me out. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, it doesn't oh, you, crawl, you it doesn't have legs. No, you no. couldn't sleep in that room ever again, Andrew. Oh, I had no choice. Oh, <laughs> I was only six years old. Well, yeah. six so or five. Yeah. Yeah, six or five. Normally you'd say five or six. six or but... Seven or six. I'm a snake. God, a snake crawling across your face. Like snake is snake. No one wants... Do you um, know who told you fits about that friend of mine lived in Byron Bay and there was a couple of diamondback pythons that were on the veranda and they called the snake guy in and they said, well, we can get rid of the pythons, but they keep the nasty snakes out. So if they were living in the ceiling, they keep the red belly black snakes and the king browns out. So Where'd what do you the want? Black, remember the black mamba, mamba, yep. mamba over in um, South Africa where we were there for I'm a Celebrity and it slithered between our legs, Kate, while we're eating dinner. On the, the first resort. night wow. we were there. The most dangerous a, snake in the world. A woman from the resort goes, guys, just going to give you a heads up here. Just nobody move or any quick movements. Mm-hmm. But we have a little friend that's um, come to join us for dinner. Yeah, mm-hmm. you'd be fine. Wet, no, quick well, I was movements. on the table a little bit quicker than she <laughs> could say that. I was hard up, up on the, the roof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie Podcast. Kate, you have a story um, I do. about something being in a toilet. Yes, I do, and not mm-hmm. not what it's meant to be in the toilet. Yeah, well, we better take you, we better take your brain and your mind out of there, hey? Oh, uh, I love a good toilet joke. Let's be honest, the, the toilet mm. humour. It's the funniest kind, and if you drop something down the toilet, even funnier. Even funnier. And yep. that's what we're talking about this morning. There's been a list of all the the craziest and most strange things that have ended up in the sewer because yeah. they've been put down the loo. My favourite is always the false teeth. Oh, no. And oh. I love that. because How does that happen? Well, I don't know, but there is still this, like, maybe we need some scary music mm-hmm. for this, Jess, if you can find it, um, because there's not much to the story. It might just be about the music, is that my dad mm-hmm. has false teeth. He's had false teeth since we were, like, very young. How it's did like, he? It's a, like, how did he lose them? Yeah. They fell out. <laughs> okay. He wasn't knocked in the mouth or there was no accident. Well, he was a police officer, so... Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. He just always had... And it was the big gag with Dad was always... He'd take his teeth out. And, you know, he's really... Yeah, funny. funny, yeah. Hilarious. Yeah. Um, and then Dad one day had to go to work, but he couldn't find his teeth. He had, to, he had a whole day at work or a whole week at work without his teeth. Oh, my God. Because... And he couldn't find them for the life of him still to this day. But we think he'd accidentally put them in a tissue and... and Put Flushed them in the toilet. the toilet. Oh, Dad! So Dad's Could false teeth have probably turned up on this survey of crazy, of craziest things. Can you things. salvage your teeth if you drop them into the toilet? Yes, yeah, you them can. Off. You can salvage anything, but oh. that's what they find in the toilets or the, the sewer. Things like wallets and credit cards and keys and all of that Wedding stuff. Wedding rings. Let's go to Leah. Hi guys, how are you going? Hey, oh, what did you drop in the loo? Oh, terrible toilet story. I was about to give evidence at the Supreme Court in the city. And I went to the toilet and I dropped my phone in the toilet. It was so... It's terrible. Leah, really. I'm trusting you were just doing a number one. <laughs> oh, no. 
<laughs> that it was terrible. Like it, oh. when the moment it goes into the toilet, that it. You've just got to, you've got to, you know what? Go you straight can't in. Hesitate at all. Bang straight in, straight out. And if never watch the movie Train Spotting. No, if you, no. If, if you oh, can, there's a shocking toilet in there. And what was the evidence you had, Leah, on the phone? What was that? <laughs> No, it was all yeah, it was all gone. I was due to give evidence. It was my own court case. Can, oh, oh, can happen. Oh, like, Leah, did you ever win? I'm so stressed. Did you ever yeah, win? Yeah, no, it was it was halfway through, but I was just so stressed. Yeah. It's just so horrible feeling. Yeah. Like the phone was never oh, good. Oh my god, it's horrible when that oh, happens. Yeah. When all the evidence is washed away and you're trying to defend. <laughs> remember, cocaine Cassie couldn't remember the code on her mobile phone, which would have got her out of trouble. Um, but yeah. I can never remember the code either. Really? You, yeah. <laughs> good morning, Bianca. What did you lose in the loo? My tongue ring. Oh, thank what God. What are you doing? Are you licking the bowl again? <laughs> Get a dunny brush, no. Bianca. No, I, I was, I was um, flushing the toilet and then, like, it w- come undone in my mouth and I went to grab it and it's fallen into the bowl and I'm like... Oh my god! Like, Bianca, did you? Because I just got yeah. a pierced. Oh damn! That must have been a sign, though, is don't you think? Where you went? Oh, okay, maybe I wasn't meant to get a pierced. Let's let that go. <laughs> yeah. You I didn't get it so. out. You didn't get it out and stick it back in your tongue, did you? No way, no. Oh, no, yeah. I didn't. Oh, you I just um... rinse it off. Yeah, you can. <laughs> oh. Do you know what happened to me once? I was in Nepal, and I went to oh, this toilet. having a yak pizza? No, I wasn't having a yak pizza. <laughs> I was at a little town called Tamboche. And this anyway, is your school excursion, The toilets it? were like, if you walked into this toilet, it was just like a swinging barn door. It was just a bit of floorboard mm-hmm. cut out, and then it was a long drop, and then you had to put a bit of hay on top. Anyway, I'm there, and I'm doing number twos, and I'm thinking, Why? I look to the right, and I see there's another bit of floorboard that's missing. And I go, oh, my God, this is like a public number two spot. Next thing you know, a monk walks through the door. What? And he starts lifting up his gown to poo next to me. Yeah, yeah there's door. no doors. And he couldn't, no, there's no door. So I, I sort of pushed him on the shoulder to say, could you... You, t- well, you that's, touched yeah, him. That's it's the not mo- your culture, of, mate. Yeah, you've got to deal with I, it. Well, I said to the monk, and he didn't speak English. So I was kind of trying How to signal to him. the monk out. <laughs> so you didn't poo with the... a man? You no. didn't poo in the I same room I... as a man? No, I wouldn't want to do that. What a horrible experience and for that the monk. Poor m- I felt rude pushing a monk. Not enough to meditation to get through that. <laughs> Gives you bad luck. It's like bad luck for seven years or something, I he, think, if you touch a monk. He quit. <laughs> He's not a monk anymore. That was before I ate the yak pizza, which is also a true story. Oh, because that'll go straight through you, well, won't it? Did. I tell you what, it didn't. I was back in the same room as the monk. This is the Fitzy and Whipper with Kate Ritchie podcast. This is a bit of a, a community service announcement, a little bit of help. Okay. Um, because when bad things happen in your life, chances are those bad things have happened to somebody else and they can offer you perhaps some support yeah. or at least a bit of insight. That's a good way to put it. I always say that to the kids to if you think you're strange for thinking something, l- let me tell you that there's a million other people thinking that right now. Exactly. And another important thing yep. to say is they are your feelings, they belong to you, and you're allowed to feel them. You can feel them because they're real. Um, there's been a survey done by a place called Il- Illicit Encounters. Oh, here we go. I mean, it sounds very... Can we get a bit of saucy music, Jess? Kind of Could you? raunchy. Or, or maybe I've been, even... I've, I've signed up for them for about three years now. <laughs> Does it deliver, mate? They're, they're actually... Real, they get back to you really quickly. Oh, I bet, I bet they service. do. Oh, mm. That's just to get your credit card details, though, I think. Yeah. Okay. I think there's a Taylor Swift track about an illicit encounter. Oh, my God. She's had a few. Yeah, illicit affairs. Illicit affairs. Mm-hmm. Maybe we could even just do a bit of that. Anyway. Who so was that with? Harry, solid. Jake Gill? Eleanor, which one was that illicit affair that she had with? No, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It is. All, it's all a bit secretive. So you want us to solicit for affairs? No. What? I, if you give me a chance, what I want to tell you is that um, people who have cheated on their partners, yeah. they do tend to display certain kinds of behaviour and they may not be the obvious things like not coming home mm, or go, phones. going away on boys trips. Excessive sweating. Ex- <laughs> <laughs> Panic in their eyes. Not sweating at all, Prince it's, Andrew. Um, coming coming home without any clothes on, that's always a big <laughs> one. Smelling so. of someone else's perfume. Dangerous. Or after shaving. I mean, you know, it's Depends not, what game you're playing. Exactly. Um, but uh, uh, a worrying sign yeah. within the home perhaps this could indicate that your partner might be doing something else is that they 
they get up in the middle of the night. Well, they wake. And go to someone else's house. Yes, they do. <laughs> come and they pack their later. bags and they never come home. Right, so they just... I mean, that's a sign of concern for your marriage. Well, things about... I mean, uh, lying awake at night and getting up in the middle of the night, perhaps saying that, oh, I just can't sleep, yeah. that could indicate that there's something on your mind and you might even have a feeling of guilt. But but oh. above, above and beyond that, mm-hmm. getting up in the night and perhaps leaving the marital bed yeah, would indicate yeah. and has in the past that you need to go and do like a sneaky text right. back okay. to but, someone. But Lisa or a sneaky wee maybe. Mm. You might be doing <laughs> but Lisa sleeps in another room so I don't even know if she's getting up in the middle of the night. I'm going to need to put lasers in. Well, she doesn't, of... she doesn't need to get up in the middle of the night. She can have an affair from her own bed. Oh. How dare you? <laughs> And it's quite, I mean, it's quite, it's it's about 800 metres from your bedroom as well and another quarters of the house. Do you not have any You other wouldn't day? have any idea. Fitz, do you not happen the other day, which concerned me a lot? A friend came over and we were talking about the Far Too Personal Trainer. Um, now only $10 at the Far Too Personal <laughs> Trainer.com. <laughs> Clear get, get in quick. A friend came over and said to Lisa, Oh, have you read the book? And she said, Yeah, I have. And then he said to her, My wife, is it a bit of a turn on? And she said, yeah, it is. And then I went, hang on a minute, you read my book and it did that to you and you didn't call me in from down the hallway? Missed opportunity for you. What? <laughs> what? That, that is here I am. nothing she to do she with your story. Need, she doesn't need to. Your husband's just, I'm down here, honey, just bedroom on the left. I'm the author. If the you th- want. It's a bit real like, thing. what's that saying about can teach... An old dog? No, no. Can't Can't catch, can't bowl, can't catch. Those that can't do, teach. Exactly. So a bit like you. Now that I've taught her. (laughs) No, no. The book, in Mm. some ways, is the same as those who can't. Give a man a rod. What is Say it again. Those that can't do, teach. Teach. So for you, you can't do those hot things in the book, (laughs) but you feel as though you can teach the readers something. Give a girl a rod and teach her to fish. Fool me once, you can't be fooled twice. Horse before the cart is my favourite one. Or what came first, first. the chicken or the egg? Well, I just saw the chicken having a cigarette, so I assume it was it. (laughs) Fits in Whipper with Kate Ritchie is a Nova podcast. For more great shows like this, download the Nova Player via the App Store or Google Play. The Nova Player.